Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy. Welcome back to another video. So today I got to see the movie Argyle in theaters and uh, I want to give you guys my honest thoughts. My movie. Movie. Review. Review. Okay, so as per usual with my videos, um, I'm going to give you guys my first two minutes are going to be my spoiler free thoughts and my overall thought review of the movie. Um, and then I'm going to give a spoiler warning and then we're going to get really deep into this. So let's dive into that. Okay, so right off the bat, um, I thought that this movie was a lot of fun. I do think that there's um, a lot to take in with this movie, and I feel like they do a lot with the plot that um, is kind of overwhelming at times. There's a lot of parts where it's like you really need to like strap in and really pay attention because um, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of exposition happening in the first 20, 35 minutes or whatever, and if you miss a bit of it, later in the movie there will be a big reveal that'll happen with whatever tiny little piece of information that you miss, and it feels like a lot. But other than that, I think that this movie... Uh, is fun. I think that overall, the fact that we have two kind of stories going on at the same time, we have the story of what's actually going on with real life with Ella Conway and um, the spy espionage stuff that's happening with her. And then we also have the stuff that's going on within her books. And I like the way that they do a really good job of differentiating stuff that's happening in real life is usually a little bit more... Um, believable it's a lot of stuff that feels very realistic as opposed to when it is in its fictional world it is over the top it is insane there's a lot of visuals and stuff that are really cool but super unrealistic and i really like the way that they differentiate what's really happening and what's not happening with that and then um i like the way that during certain sequences or whatever they'll kind of cut in and out of being here's reality here's what would be happening in the book version of the movie and um it does a really good job of playing against these two character archetypes and they're just, Obviously, the character who's a very experienced spy, played by Sam Rockwell, um, Aiden, and then there's Elle Conway, who's just a novelist who doesn't really know um, that much about spy espionage, but she's done a lot of research and stuff like that. So she's able to figure out a lot of things and kind of help him out in certain situations. And I like the way that um, whenever we are seeing moments where she's writing out the draft of the script, it does a really good job of leaning into what's going on in the movie. And then if there's ever moments where she has writer's blocks, there's a really fun sequence with Henry Cavill's character. He's interacting within the scene and then he'll just pause and kind of look at the camera and be like, and he'll just freeze. And I like the fact that like in a lot of those sequences, what will happen is he'll freeze and then we'll slowly see the background fade from whatever the background is to being a blank screen with the text behind it. And um, overall, I think that this movie has a brilliant style to it. I think that it looks really nice. Um, if you're a fan of the Kingsman movies, Matthew Vaughn did those. He did this. Um, there's a lot of fun style in this. I think that it definitely feels like a Matthew Vaughn film. And I overall really do like his direction. Um, and I think that everything with that works really well. Um, the comedy in it is fantastic. The action sequences. Towards the end, we get like three back-to-back -back action sequences that I think are some of the most beautiful and unique action sequences I've ever seen. But... Because it takes so long to get there, it uh, kind of by the time like we're getting to like the third or fourth one, it kind of feels like really they're still going. And um, other than that, I think this movie's pretty good. Um, it's a two hour and 20 minute long runtime. And I do feel like that feels really long. And a lot of the exposition that is happening throughout the middle of the story kind of gets rushed. And then at the beginning, there's a lot that's really slowly building up. So I think that overall, this movie just has a weird pacing problem. The final act feels like it's like 15 minutes longer than it probably should be. And um, there's a lot of moments where you'll think, okay, everything's done. They, they completed this mission or whatever that they're working on. But then it just keeps going and going and going. But um, other than that, I think that the movie's great. Like I said... There are three beautiful action sequences at the end of the movie that are very stylistically different from each other, but also very unique, and I don't think you'll see them anywhere else. And um, I love that. I think that, that was fantastic. And um, overall, I think that um, all of the character work in here is a whole lot of fun. But that being said, we're going to dive into the more spoilery thoughts here. So if you haven't seen the movie, you can go ahead and click out, maybe save this to a watch later playlist and see it later. But that being said, let's dive into this full review. Okay, so starting off at the very beginning of this movie, we open up with um, Ellie Conway at a little book reading tour. Um, we see basically the opening sequence that we see during the trailers where it's Henry Cavill with Dua Lipa or whatever and they're dancing and then he has to escape her and there's a really fun car chase scene which like I said earlier um I think that they do a really good job of making the stuff that's happening in the book really feel like it's fantasy and it can't actually happen because he will like hijack a car drive in places where cars obviously cannot drive because he like 
drives over rooftops and stuff like that there's a part where he's grinding on a rail like it's a little skateboard or something and there's just a lot of fun ridiculous stuff like that and then it'll pan out uh, at the end of the story to her reading it in front of a group of people and they all start asking her a bunch of questions because she's at this fun little book press conference thing and um, a lot of the questions are a little interesting there's some people who are just like wow you really know how to write things in the perspective of a spy it kind of feels like almost like you have personal experience doing this uh, other people ask stuff like wow you actually got like the geopolitical aspects of this story right how do you get your research so perfectly do you read the future and they basically start asking her if she's like uh basically like a fortune teller or something like that you know the people who can see the future it's not a fortune teller you know what I mean? People who, who can see the future or whatever, and they basically start questioning her, and it's like, you kind of get, like, this eerie feeling that, like, the people are asking her these questions are, like, really thinking that she's a spy, and she doesn't really see it that way. She just kind of, like, plays it off. She's just like, well, I'm just a silly little author, and then she's like, but if I was a spy, that's what I would say. And then, um, it just kind of cuts to her doing her own mundane tasks or whatever. She's having a little, uh, date night with her cat and finishing up the next book of Argyle, and um the next morning it opens up and um what's it called she had sent it to her mother and her mother has read through the entire book it was kind of giving her some pointers and was like yeah 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 i really like it but i feel like i feel like it needs more and we kind of get into this part where ellie conway is having a really bad writer's block she's not really sure what to do so she's like you know what i'm gonna go visit my parents and um so she hops on the train and this is where the entire plot kind of gets set into motion we get to see Sam Rockwell's character for the first time, and I love Sam Rockwell. I, I will probably always have a special part in my, a special place in my heart for Sam Rockwell because huge Marvel fan, huge plays Justin Hammer in the MCU. Justin Hammer is one of my favorite characters in the comics, and um, his performance in here is fantastic. He's incredibly fun. He brings this energy to him that's fantastic. Um, I feel like this movie is a very silly and goofy movie, and you need a lot of really silly actors. And his portrayal in this is fantastic. I think from start to finish, he always brings just the right energy to bring to this weird ensemble movie. Um, and uh, I really like it. And something that I like when they're first introducing him, um, he kind of has this sequence where he's talking to El Conway and being like, yeah, uh, you're an author. I'm a spy. And then he'll basically like explain to her, hey, you're going to be in a lot of danger in about 20 minutes. And what's going to happen is I'm going to protect you and I'm going to save your life. And you're going to trust me now and we're going to work together. And then um, it proceeds to everything that he said was going to happen happens. And it's really great action sequences on a train. I feel like any action sequence that takes place on a train or a bus instantly going to be really cool and what I like about this one that makes it so stylistically different is um she hears that he's a, a super spy so she starts like fading in and out from seeing him then seeing Henry Cavill's Argyle being the person protecting her and it's just so fun because like there will be action se sequences where like Sam Rockwell is kind of getting his ass kicked right now but then it'll like cut to being Henry Cavill and he's like don't worry I got this and then doing you know a very glorious uh, takedown of a person or whatever. And it's just so much fun. Like, I love all the action set pieces in this movie. I think they're all fantastic and they work really well. Um, and uh, I just like the fact that the that's how the movie starts. Feels very grounded. Feels like almost like stuff that could happen. And Matthew Vaughn, as a director, has like this really like huge personality, a lot of big color palettes, a lot of very interesting set work and stuff like that. So he creates something that starts off fresh feels like it's something that could happen in real life and it slowly gets more and more and more and more unhinged and crazy throughout the entire movie which i really like um but here's where i started having a little bit of issues with the plots um around this time uh what's it called they have to like really quickly explain to ellie hey by the way everything that you wrote in your books stuff that's actually happening in real life and we need to get to the bottom of this mystery that's supposed to be happening in book five which is the one she's currently having writer's blocks with and um i think that they kind of have to find a way to introduce the information to ellie conway really quickly and uh because of it uh there's literally just like a monologue where sam rockwell talks for about two minutes and he explains literally everything but they interweave it with these scenes of what's going on at like the evil corporation and um it's a lot to take in in a really short amount of time and uh, that's where i was talking about how like there's some sequences that feel really like clunky and there's a couple of scenes like that where it's like it's just exposition dump and then later in the movie you'll need something that was really important in that exposition dump but because they're interweaving it with certain stuff you kind of miss some really big points which i think might have been by design because they wanted to include these twists 
that were gonna shock you. But then there's other moments where it's like, no, they're just dropping like huge bombs on us right now and we have no idea what they're talking about or what the correlation is or anything like that. And um, I think that it does get very clunky during the like, after 30 minutes into the movie, there's like that next like 40 minute span feels like a giant mess. And thrown in there, there's a lot of fun comedy. There's a lot of uh, kind of like tension between Ellie and Aiden and if they're going to like date or anything like that. Like they kind of have like this weird will they won't they tension that starts happening. And um, there's a lot of fun action during that set piece because once again, Ellie Conway is not a spy, but she's running around with this guy who is a spy and there are people trying to kill her. So he keeps having to like save her and it's really fun. Like I do think that Sam Rockwell um, works really well here because as he is being a total badass and kicking a lot of people's asses, he just keeps like turning to her and having like a fun one-liner or like dancing and stuff like that. And it's great. I love that stuff. Um, but uh, then there's like another like weird, like 15 minutes where they do like four plot twists in such a short amount of time that it kind of just feels like whiplash at this point. And I feel like every single one of those plot twists take away from the prior plot twist or Either way, or as they progress, they get less and less interesting or surprising because there's a twist that, um, what's it called? It's Sam Rockwell goes on the phone with somebody and uh, Ellie overhears him saying like, oh my God, this person needs to have a bullet in their head. And she runs away. She freaks out. She calls her parents and she goes to run away to her parents. And then there's some big reveal that her parents aren't her parents and they're secret spies and everything like that. And it's so weird and it happens so fast. And what's it called? We get this like weird sequence where Aiden comes to save her from her parents and he's like, I'm the only person who hasn't tried to kill you in the last 25 minutes. Come with me. And um, it just feels so weird because of how quickly it all happens. And I think like if it was a slower built re reveal and the first reveal didn't happen, it probably would have been 10 times better. Because in my opinion, um, the phone call where he says like, oh, Ellie Conway needs to die or whatever. Um, it just feels like it was literally only there so that Ellie would have a reason to run away. Because without that, we don't get the big reveal that her parents aren't actually her parents. But it just feels like so forced. And I really hated that because up to that point, everything in the story was running very smoothly. And then after that point, there's like a lot of hiccups that start happening with like things that don't really, really like line up perfectly. And um, a lot of questions that now we have to have like weird flashbacks and explain like, oh, this is this thing that happened and here's why this thing happened the way that it happened. And it feels very weird the way that they decided to do the exposition of this movie. Um, but yeah, that being said, um, some things I did really enjoy about this, every single actor here worked really well. I think I've mentioned earlier with Sam Rockwell, you needed to have silly actors for this movie. Brian Cranston plays a very over the top villain insanely well and i really really liked his portrayal in this the uh actress who's playing ellie conway's mother is fantastic in this as well she is one of the funniest parts i feel like she has like three or four one-liners that are just fantastic um what's it called i think that henry cavill in this movie is pretty interesting every single time he comes on the screen i think that he uh is the center of attention and with good reason he is this great presence to him here and um i really liked what they were able to do with each of the characters and stuff like that but um, there's a lot of there's a lot of just stuff that feels like a giant mess in the middle. And then we finally get the third act, which, like I said, felt like it dragged on a lot because they have to go to this base to get this uh, encryption code. And then they're planning on sending it to Samuel L. Jackson's character or whatever so that they could uh, save the day. And um, Ellie Conway does this weird elaborate plan to try to uh, what's it called? Get it. Out. Oh, I didn't even talk about the big reveal. Argyle is, it is, is Ella Conway. I had that spoiled to me because I read a plot synopsis of the movie where it says an author with amnesia is writing about a spy thriller and she has a lot of information that actually has happened in real life and it's very interesting. And I'm like, an author with amnesia? Okay, well, now we know. Um, So yeah, what's it called? When that gets revealed in the movie, that's one of those parts that I'm like, that feels so forced because it's like literally just an exposition dump and Samuel L. Jackson's character pretty much only exists to have this conversation with Ellie and be like, oh, by the way, you used to be a super cool spy. And uh, all these stories you're telling are stuff that's happened to you. And um, it's a very interesting, interesting scene. And everything that happens afterwards, she's like slowly regaining her memory. So all of a sudden she's like a total badass again. And it's interesting 
it works in the sake of the movie but i just feel like the way that they revealed it was very lackluster considering the entire movie was building to it and all of the trailers were like oh my god there's going to be this huge mystery about it um but like i said since it was spoiled to me i literally read a synopsis of it while i was buying my tickets to see the movie and i was like oh i got so bumped out but that being said i think it was cool i think it worked enough in the movie um and what's it called so yeah, so now we have this super elaborate scheme. They're at the uh, super... I don't even remember what the group of people's called. I don't know. They're, they're, they're at, like, the weird, like, evil agent people places. And um, they start, like, just wiping out hordes and hordes of bad people who Brian Cranston's like, Go kill him! Send every guy that we have! Or whatever. And um, they have the most colorful action sequence because they get like sp smoke bombs and stuff like that and there are a bunch of different colored smoke bombs they're throwing them all over the place they're firing guns they're doing a bunch of like dance numbers basically while they're doing this action set piece and um it might quite literally be one of the most beautiful action sequences i've ever seen it's very reminiscent of if you've seen the suicide squad movie there's um a harley queen fight sequence where she is like going around and there's like flowers going out everywhere behind her and stuff like that it felt a lot like that and it was so beautiful and epic and there's a lot of like them like i said they're doing these weird dance numbers and then um there's just like hearts going up in the smoke and stuff like that very beautiful um action sequence and then a little bit later um during the uh, same sequence they uh have a moment where they're in some weird room and they accidentally shoot open a couple of tanks and there's just oil all over the floor and all the bad guys who are chasing after them are really struggling to catch up to them because the floor is super slippery and um El Conway since she's slowly regaining her memory was like oh my god this thing that I thought was a supplanted memory was like an actual memory and she was really good at ice skating so we basically get to watch somebody with the skills of like a Olympic level figure skater go around and kill people while figure skating and i'm not gonna lie when i tell you this might be one of the most entertaining scenes i've ever seen in a movie ever it is just so fun she goes around like i said imagine just like an olympic figure skating like entire dance routine number whatever but people being killed in the middle of it. It is epic. She even does like the thing where they get really low and they do the spin, 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 spin thing, but while shooting. And it's so cool. I loved everything about that sequence. I thought it was fantastic. Um, and uh, after we get those two really epic action sequences, and it's been like, what's it called? About like 25, 30 minutes or whatever. There's more because they get out to the uh, roof of the building and they realize they're on a boat interesting i i like that twist but at the same time i was like okay um and then what's it called then they end up fighting each other because part of ellie conway's like story was that she got uh brainwashed by the people who thought they were her parents so um the person it still has this like song and like this trigger words that's able to uh what's it called trick her into fighting sam rockwell's character and uh they fight it's a very interesting fight it's very like I want to say it's very like one-sided because obviously Sam Rockwell's character is like I'm not I'm not gonna hit you I'm not gonna kill you or whatever or anything like that um and then what's it called eventually they realize they just need to break the music box that's like hypnotizing hypnotizing her and um that's it that's basically the movie they uh, Ellie Conway goes on to write the final book in the ch installment or whatever and um they kind of set up potentially another Argyle movie that like takes place 20 years earlier very interesting stuff um but overall I thought this movie was fun I think that it only really works if you have silly actors in it and I think that um John Cena in his small role is fantastic I think that Henry Cavill in his role is fantastic I think that Brian Cranston absolutely kills it Sam Rockwell absolutely kills it um, I'm not a huge fan of Bryce Dallas Howard, but I think in this role, she did a rel relatively decent job. There was some stuff towards the end of the movie that I was like, I'm not finding this performance very convincing. But for the first, like, half of the movie, she's fantastic. Um, but yeah, overall, liked this movie. It felt like a giant mess, but it was more fun than it was messy. And, and in my opinion, if it's able to accomplish the goal of being an absolute blast, it works for me. So um, I liked it. I'm going to give it a final score of, and I haven't thought about this actually. 
I'm gonna give it like a 79 out of 100. I think that the uh, issues with the plot in the middle of the movie is enough for me to want to bring it down a couple of notches. But that being said, the action set with pieces at the end were genuinely some of the most beautiful action set pieces I've seen in a while. And I feel like that's where like Matthew Vaughn really fully takes over and shows his Matthew Vaughn-ness. And I do love Matthew Vaughn. Um, but yeah, that was it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and checking it out. I love and appreciate you guys so much for watching. And if you liked it, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Back at it again, but that's irrelevant. Flow so smooth, they calling me Mr. Elegant. Like an elephant, I got a long nose. Like a president, I've got a few hoes. Swift with a stutter, I'm smooth like butter. Don't see it coming when I slip undercover. Like a big dog, but I don't bite. I'm still a big broad, I'd win that fight. Come match you and I knock out your lights.